Well, good morning. I figured I would do a video on DoorDash. I have kind of a light, kind of weird. And to put it in perspective, I run DoorDash um, to show the kind of success that I do have doing it. it. It depends on what day of the week. It depends on when. But I do it part time around my other job, and and I'm top dasher almost every month. And I'm not saying that because I want to look good. I'm not saying that because I want to make you guys think that I'm all that in a bag of chips. I'm saying that because I have averaged top dasher for, I don't know, all last year. And then I really haven't pushed for it until last month. And I got it last month and this month. Um, I haven't really pushed to run much DoorDash all year until recently. So... I just want to put it into perspective that when I'm talking about it, I do really well. Um, and, and being top dasher, I don't do it as a sign of being great. I do it as a sign of I want to run when I want to, as I want to. Thus saying all that, uh, I have a lot of experience running DoorDash. I have done it for about five years now. Um, but let's get to where I want to go with the video. Um... I just want to make sure you guys know I have credentials to say that I'm pretty good at what I do. I try to average not less than 20 bucks an hour. It depends when you're running, where you're running, but most of the time I can average at least 20 bucks an hour or 19, something like that. And part of that's because of the area I run. So, um, cause I know in some places you can have higher, a lot higher averages than that. But I get good tips and good ratings. I have a 4.9 rating. So, um, I could be at 5, but I take some of those orders that you really shouldn't because they're super late. So, they're going to give you bad reviews regardless. But here's where I want to go with all this. I'm saying all that to basically tell you that I'm legit. I have done this long enough that I'm pretty solid at what I do. I like what I do. And I'm good at it when it comes to DoorDash. Do I get my frustrations? Absolutely. But here's what I want to cover. There are several things that you don't want to look for when it comes to an order. Um, four things. Get rid of the one, two, three. So now the first thing, yes, my nails were painted. Wee! Um, my daughter wanted to. I didn't want to, but she did. My daughter wins. <laughs> um, so first thing I look for is how much the pay is and that is compared to the distance I'm running now if I'm running a DoorDash order and it averages at least a dollar per mile I'm more inclined to take it if it's a dollar per mile going both ways I'm even a lot more inclined to take it unless I just don't feel like taking it Obviously, you can turn down whatever order you want. Um, I try not to unassigned orders. Usually, my unassigned orders, my incomplete orders, that's two of the categories in the ratings is acceptance rate and incomplete. On the acceptance rate, I'm very picky. I try to keep it around 70%, but I'm very picky. When it comes to completion rate, I try to complete everything. Usually when I get incomplete, it's because I mark a store closed and they decide to not let it be marked closed, but incomplete instead, which happens a lot. So I try not to run when stuff is closed anymore. I used to because you get paid half pay. Now they kind of screw you over that way. So I try not to cover incomplete orders. Or I try not to take orders that where I know the store is closed most of the time because that's going to hurt your ratings. But so number one, I look at price to distance because I want to make at least a dollar per mile. Usually when you can keep to that method, you can do pretty decent. Um, I don't try to say, like when I, the second thing is when I run DoorDash, I know people that's like, I got to have a $20 per hour thing and I got to keep it at $20 an hour. The thing about DoorDash is you might have two orders when you first get on the platform, where it might be $5 and $9 for your first two orders. And it might take an hour for you to get those two orders. 
So, and I've had that. So that'd be $13. So you're looking at like, I know some people have looked at it like, I'm not getting my $20 an hour, this stinks. But the thing to consider, and this is again part of number two, the thing to consider is that that next hour, if you're doing it during a peak time, like lunch, dinner, even breakfast sometimes, breakfast isn't near as busy as the other two, but even breakfast, if you stay consistent, it will add up really quick. I've had it where my first hour was 10 bucks. Horrible. It's nothing. Start at 4.30. At 5.30, I had 10 bucks. I'm sitting here going, this is dinner time. My next hour, I made almost $27. Or er, $29, I think it was. And then the next hour, I think I made another 25 So... And I think, actually, I think it was about 40 minutes, and that was on Saturday, and then I stopped. I was at $70 at two and a half hours. And that's when I pulled into home and was done. So to put it in perspective, your first hour or your last hour could be really bad, but you could have a really good lunch hour where that makes up for it. Just stay consistent. Look at the final number. like. Last Saturday, I, like I said, I had $70 in two and a half hours. And I'm sitting here going, wow. You know, I wasn't expecting that. It happened. I've also done it where, you know, Tuesdays are the worst day, I think, when it comes to DoorDash. And that's number three is keep in mind what day of the week it is. Um, obviously, if you run Saturdays, Everybody's shorthanded right now, so when you hit Saturdays and Fridays, everything is being slammed, hammered, you know, slammed, hammered, so I got slammered. Um, but when everything is being hammered, you're going to have longer wait times. You can still make the money, but you're going to have longer wait times, and so it makes it a lot harder. So I try to run more of the peak times and not the down times, because you're just going to be waiting for no reason. That's number three. Keep in mind what time, what day of the week it is. So number one is the price to distance ratio. And there's a cop. Let's turn that off. But the first one is price to distance ratio. The second one is uh, not trying to keep track of what time or how much you're making an hour, but as a total. Because it will surprise you a, a lot of times. It did me, like I said, Saturday afternoon, it did me big time. Um, next one is what day of the week it is. And the other thing to keep in mind when you run is the fact that keep in mind of where you're going. When I walk in the store, some people walk in, accept an order, and then they're like, oh my goodness, I accepted this order, and I'm going all the way 20 miles to my destination. Know where you're going before and after you pick up. That's the way I look at it. Because if I know I'm going to be on generally what street I'm going to deliver to, I can tell you what distance it is. And that goes back to number one. Is keeping it within a mile. You know that you can get a general idea of where you're going when you are looking at your order before you accept it. It only takes you a second to look at it and figure that out. But as soon as I accept the order, the first thing I do is I look at the actual address and how they want you to give it to them. Hand it to them, leave it at the door, don't knock. You know, those are the, and and the other thing I look at is really fine tooth comb the details. Is there a drink? Is it a shopping order? You know, a lot of, I've had shopping orders I've looked at and I accepted and I'm looking at it and it's like nine items and it's all food. Okay, no problem. I've also had it where I've had two items and I accepted it because the payout's really good. But then it might be someplace like Meyer where they want one food item, they want a pet item. Two opposite sides of the store. Two items, I might actually still do it. But 
do not think it's going to take me five minutes to go into the store and get to the first place and probably another couple minutes to go to the other side of the store and then to find the actual item is going to take another couple minutes so about five six minutes if it's in the same area like if it's all food, if both items are food orders sure i'm more inclined to take it if it's going all over the store like i had an order where it was like a toy uh makeup makeup's one of those i really don't want to touch Girls want pads. I, I don't want to buy pads, but it doesn't bother me. I buy it for my daughter, so it really doesn't bother me as much. But some people, that's a no-no. I, I think it's dumb. I think girls should get their own feminine products because that's kind of whatever. Um, but that's a totally top, different topic. And it's not that I'm embarrassed to get it. It's just it's not really my responsibility. And I don't like to know what other people's business. I'm kind of one of those people that's like, it's your business, I want to stay out of it. So that's just my opinion. But when I go to shopping orders or I go to pick up, I know my details, I know my distance, I know my drop-off location, I know how I'm dropping it off. So that way when I get in my car, and, and most of that I can do while I'm waiting on the order. So when I pick up, and I'm waiting, or I get to, if it's a shopping order, I look at it before I do it. If it's all going all over the store, I will probably unassign it if I don't like it. Um, I've done that on numerous occasions. Ooh, I gotta hit the toy, I have to hit the pet part, I have to hit the food part, I'm all over the store, no, I'm good. Kroger, I'm a little more inclined on, like Instacart, I'm more inclined to do the full order, going all over the store, Instacart, because they kinda tell you where, when, and how. DoorDash is like, it's, it's, you know, it's either you know or you don't. Um, but that's my four tips. Um, but knowing your information is probably the most important thing. Know your info. Um, like I said, I try to make it so that way when I'm getting out, I'm in my car, I'm gone. I've seen people get in their cars and just sit there and wait and wait and because they're looking up everything and they're doing everything like in my town I am one of the fastest and I'm not saying this to brag I'm saying this because it's a speed thing I am one of the ones where I get in the car I start it I back up I'm gone everybody else will sit there and play with their phone a little bit I'm not saying I'm the fastest but and it doesn't matter if I am or not but what's important is the fact that I'm grabbing I'm going and I'm going so that's my tips for DoorDash. Um, I kind of cover a little bit of everything on the topics on these on these videos. Please like, share, subscribe. Just a thumbs up. That's all I want is just a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. It tells me I need to work on something, which I probably do. Um, but yeah, that's my video for DoorDash and my tips for being efficient and fast. Um, you guys take care, be blessed, and thumbs up, buddy. Thumbs up. Yay.